Blessings, everybody, on the replay. We are on our second Monday of September. It's eventful, um, very eventful, the energies. The 9-11 energies in general tend to be um, very interesting, if you notice, really, since the major event that happened in the States uh, 22 years ago now. Um, there's there's interesting that things that keep on happening. So right now, in our lives, it can be feeling a little bit chaotic, um, a lot of information when you add in all of the retrograde energy, remembering that Venus has just recently come to direct, but has that full month of just being her shadow period, meaning the continuation of focusing on relationships with yourself, with your loved ones, with others, with colleagues, uh, and your relationship with money is still on the highlight. So if you feel like you're getting drained or just like too much venus retrograde um my advice would be more nourishment that's the other part of venus not her retrograde but the other part of venus is self-nourishment self-love self-care sometimes in an in indulgence but not in a negative way in really bringing yourself to a place of luxury where you feel amazing and luxury can be an incredible bath with roses it can be your favorite chocolate uh, it can be, you know, splurging on something that's not outrageous, but that you don't do all the time. Maybe it's like that fancy ice cream um, from somewhere versus like a Dairy Queen one. So we have that, but the energy we're working with the most today is Mercury's retrograde. Now he's going to start stationing direct in about two days around the 13th. But then he also has a shadow period and his shadow period lasts approximately a week to a week and a half, meaning that miscommunications can still easily occur um something simple if you can versus emailing and texting or messaging anywhere is to have a phone call especially if you're planning uh an event or a meetup with somebody because it's just it can be very foggy the other way so being as clear with your communications as possible if you're signing any contracts you have to be like the biggest lawyer slash detective and make sure you don't miss anything because it can easily get overlooked during Mercury retrograde. Um, tending to your vehicle and your house and, and their mechanical and electrical needs, that's really important. This is also when um, cell phones crack and break, uh, computers go down, all those things, because there's a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. Now, what I love is this tie-in yesterday in Journey Through Chem, uh, class number nine, we worked on the crown chakra, with Archangel Michael and taught the Atlantean priest King. And Mercury happens to be one of Tot's, not necessarily an alter ego, but the a way that he's known. So Mercury is the Roman name for the same God Tot that's also known as Hermes in Greek mythology. So there's this, there's this beautiful arc that we're dealing with right now, which is really about accessing higher consciousness and peeling away the layers of misinformation, distrust, overwhelm, chaos, overthinking, anything like that. And I, I believe I mentioned it, I want to say last week in at least one of my classes, that is there something on your, if you have a massive to-do list right now, is there something that you know is not quite as important as the others? Like, you know, say, for your week, maybe there's a priority of five things that you really need to get done and address this week. And then there's like two to three things that can trickle out until next week or the week after. So just giving yourself that grace. Um, I've been in an extreme period of work myself. And as you probably know, is that I really, really love teaching. And so I extended one of my classes by three weeks, which wasn't planned, which kind of just adds a little bit to my workload, changes my schedule a little bit. And um, with, with the workload that I have, what I have been able to do for the most part is shut it down by seven or eight at night. So then I can be with my family and begin to unwind so that I'm not staying up late thinking about it. My old patterns were work till 10, 30, 11, 12, one in the morning, and then go to bed, but not sleep because now my brain is still processing, thinking and thinking of new ideas and that's just the kind of brain that I have, or maybe that's how we all are. Um, and then in general, for, for those of us with uh, younger kids, whether they're in school or not, all the 
um, all the activities start right around this time. And so getting used to new driving patterns uh, for me, ways, what time I have to make supper and have it prepared for um, all these things, getting scheduled to my husband to pick up the kids when I'm working. Um, so it's just been, it's, it's a lot. And so if I think about today's energy uh, of that, it's probably a good time just to like clear it out and see if we come back to peace, back to stillness, back to breath. So that's what we're going to work on today. And um, allowing yourself the grace for whatever you need today, whether it's a sleep, a rest, whether your mind drifts off into some of your tasks, if you can return to your breath and just focus on your breath, that in itself is a major win, gift, and accomplishment. So let's let's begin. And I think I'm just really going to slowly take you through some grounding, some auric checks, and really just sit into the energies. Deep breaths in. And they're telling me to for you to picture something that's really cozy, really comfy for you. And as, as per usual, somewhere with Gaia. So it can be your favorite season. And you're dressed in a way that you feel warm and nourished and safe and that nothing distracts you. So as you, as you walk in your sacred space, which for many of us is a beautiful enchanting forest, the ocean, an island, a meadow, you're going to pay attention to your breath first and even your heartbeat. Are you taking full breaths in right now? Do you notice that you're actually changing them because you haven't been, you've been maybe almost in a slight hyperventilation for a while in that go, go, go mode. When you breathe out, can you breathe out some of the energy that's in the mind? Can you let it flow through the body and be released through the chakras of the feet? And can we set the intention to be as present in this moment as we can allow ourselves to be? When you come to a place in your sanctuary that feels really good, and I'm seeing for those of us that are in a meadow, like just this beautiful rock, large rock you could sit on, it's nice and smooth on top. For some of us, we find a tree and some moss and it feels like a natural bed or even cradle there. Whatever it is, finding solace and stillness. And then let's feel our root chakras begin to open pulse and come into awareness thinking of that beautiful ruby red ray within and then bringing our energy up into our sacral chakra so for women sacral chakras for men root chakras but feeling the energy and the connection of those two creativity with security grounding with passion ruby red ray with the beautiful orange ray. And then see, no feel or imagine a grounding cord emerging from those lower chakras and working their way, its way past your thighs and your knees, your ankles and your feet and making its way into the Terra itself. And as it travels down, you feel the warmth of Gaia, her love, 
her care, her nurturing. And then however it feels right to you, whether it's her heart, her womb space, whatever's attracting you in that moment, feel yourself connecting to this earth mother who has cared for you in each of your incarnations and in particular in this one as we all go through massive shifts and transformation. Notice again on your breath and your heart rate. Have you noticed that they've slowed down, that you're more relaxed? And then as we think about the week ahead or the remainder of September, what is it that you could use to support your path? Time management skills, action-oriented um, base things so that you can get out your programs or your schedules, manifesting more money and prosperity and wealth. Whatever it is, set that intention. Tell Gaia. Dear Earth Mother, thank you so much for all you do for me. Right now, I could use help with the following. And as you say that, we're going to magnetize to you whatever it is you need, because it's also can be physical. Maybe you need more rest, better nutrition, um, some minerals you may be missing, but just feel that come into you. And we're going to call upon Red Tara today to help bring that in. I just want you to think about being a magnet, being a magnet for what it is you desire the most. So Red Tar is going to help bring that in, but then Mother Gaia is going to help seal it, seal it into your auric field, into your consciousness, knowing that it is on its way to being delivered to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Red Tara. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mother Gaia. Om tare tum soha, om tare tum soha, om tare tum soha, om tare tum soha. Om tare tum so ha, 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 om tare tum so ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Red Tara. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Red Tara. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mother Gaia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mother Gaia. As we complete the cycle, be in gratitude and feel as if you've already received everything that you asked for help with. Om tare tum so ha. 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 Om tare tum so ha, 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 om tare tum so ha. Breathing in, releasing. Thank you, 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 Red Tara and Mother Gaia for magnetizing to us these beautiful gifts. On our next breath, we're going to bring our consciousness back up through our grounding cord, through the layers of Gaia, through the earth star chakra, through the chakras of the feet, past the knees, the hips, and back into our root and sacral chakras. 
bringing a red and an orange flame within, feeling a beautiful activation. Bring your awareness now back to that sanctuary you're in and the place that you found to sit, to lay, or to stand underneath. We check in with our auric field and we ensure that it feels healthy and vibrant. And if not, we call upon the solar energy of our beautiful sun to radiate upon us, to not only help us activate our solar plexus from within, but really to bring our auric field into a nice golden radiance. You feel for the energies on your right and your left, are those equal? And if not, recognize where you're too far extended or contracted in the masculine or feminine. And then pull in or push out so that they feel nice and equal, two to three feet from your physical body. We then check the front of our auric field and the back. Are those even? Is our back clung right to the back of our aura clung right to the our very back? Or is there a nice room there from the back of the heart and out? And what about the front of the aura where the heart is? Have you made such a wall that it's pushed out 12 feet? Or are you in a nice divine balance using your breath? using your intention, ensuring everything feels nice and equal, harmonized. From there, we check our upper auric field above our head, two to three feet. If it's way extended into the cosmos or with the angels, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. If it's too condensed on your crown that you're getting headaches from the pressure, breathe it out. And then check the auric field below you and your feet, grounded and protected, but not smothered. Three times you go around with golden light. One, two, three. We seal it in a layer of Atlantean blue light, which is a nice royal blue, which also contains many galactic codes of our star-seeded ancestors and other star nations we've been a part of. And then we cap all that off with a beautiful layer of crystalline amethyst light that protects us upon our journey and helps clear out some of these stuck or overactive energies in our crown chakras. We now call upon Tot, Hermes, Mercury to come forward into our field of awareness. with his caduceus and his right arm, right hand. Notice the snakes that form this caduceus, the angelic wings, and that beautiful orb on top of the staff. Now Tot can be as tall as we need him to be so that that staff can touch the top of your head. But if you're laying down, perhaps he's more of a human-like size. But he says we're going to look at three types of thought forms or bubbles. The first one, he says, is the chaos. And the chaos in this way could also be a fog. It's anything that's really preventing you from seeing clearly, thinking clearly, knowing clearly. It can be 
overstimulation, but it can also be frustration. So it's just really a map of your brain. What's it like right now? What does it seem to be really focusing on? And is it being productive in what it's focusing on? And on the other part of that, if it's not being productive, what insights are you gaining right now that would help create the balance? Now we're going to go to the second thought form. Is there anything that you're missing because of the fog, because of the busyness, because of just the energy that is here? Is there any key component that Tot and his caduceus want to show you that you're currently missing? And whatever this missing piece of information is or key, it might not be possible to initiate it right now. But what we want is the knowledge and the information that something is missing so we can make informed decisions going forward. And then the third thought form is more of a check into the back of the head. Do you have any unnecessary weight, guilt, anything there that seems more of a denser, heavier energy? If not, fabulous. Enjoy that you don't. If you do, if there's something lagging, something that seems unsettled, ask Tot to shine that illuminating orb of the caduceus into the back of the head and see if it can bring about clear ideas, focuses, or actionable steps. So again, the last thought form. Let's repeat all three. The first thought form is what's happening in your mind right now. Is it chaotic? Is it full of brain fog? Is it being productive? And what type of insight do you have to bring it back to balance? The second thought form is, is there, are there any missing keys because of the way your brain is working right now are you missing out on anything that's important that you bring your attention to and then the third one is is something taking up real estate in your brain that is not serving you lagging thoughts energies doubts fears and just in allowing the caduceus through the love 
of this master teacher known as Taught the Atlantean. To help you emerge from being a prisoner of the mind. So in this moment, we're going to get out of our minds in those thought forms, knowing that by acknowledging them and asking for help, that we're already setting into motion something wonderful. But let's focus on the space that you've created in your sanctuary. What does it smell like? As you taste the air, what comes upon your tongue? Or is there a gift from Gaia? That you could enjoy right now. What fruits, roots, plants would naturally be in this environment? you could enjoy that could nourish you and now tune into the medicine of sound what does this space hold a creek a breeze a night owl waves listening to the tones and the textures of the sound all around you. Taking deep breaths. Todd says we're coming back to neutral. And then in your space, what does it feel like? The air? the ground underneath you? What season does it feel like? What's the warmth or temperature? And even what time of day have you chosen? Are you at dusk, dawn, the evening, mid-afternoon? Just feeling the magic of whatever time you've selected. And finally, using your eyes and your third eye, what do you see in this space? Does it represent to you peace and stillness? And are there any other guides or energies you should be aware of? Energies so that you can clear them if necessary. Guides, perhaps outside of taught. One of your guardian angels, a spirit animal, a dragon. Anything that perhaps has another phrase or message for you as words of advice. If there's any gifts, empowerments, activations that your guides want to give you, 
allow that to happen. And again, remember that the caduceus of tots is a wonderful healing aid. Physical discomforts, mental, emotional, spiritual. Allow yourself and the energy of snake spirit to aid you. And then we're just going to bring all of this in, all of this into your body, to your field, to your consciousness. We begin to close this meditation with the mantra of Green Tara that eliminates anything that's no longer serving you and helps you create whatever it is you're desiring to. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, Green Tara. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. 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 Breathing in. Just being in total gratitude as you receive. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Green Tara. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Green Tara. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, Green Tara. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Green Tara. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Green Tara. We thank Tot for his help in clearing our minds. We set the intention that we continue to flow with Mercury retrograde, its shadow period, with Venus retrograde, or with Venus's shadow period, and with all the other retrograde energies. Jupiter, Saturn, Chiron, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. We flow, we receive, we rest, we balance, we give when we can. Take another deep breath in. Release out. Rama, 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 Kriya, Raku, grounding you back into your space. For those on the replay, thank you so much. Next week in Galactic Temples of Light, we have a Maybon slash Fall Equinox uh, celebration. So really taking note of our harvest from the seeds we planted, from what we nourished and grew uh, throughout spring and summer, and how we're feeling, what we're going to let go of, 
what we're ready to embrace as we come into a new season and just celebrating our paths in general. It is the Atlantean Festival of Air, um, which in Atlantis is a nice two week festival of celebration and harvest and abundance and joy and music and dance. So perhaps finding something to help you celebrate outside of class with people, with feasts, with music. Thank you so much for those in our live class. We'll be taking a five minute break to integrate um, any of the messages.